So I. Hallelujah. 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 We are live. Hallelujah. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. Hallelujah. And um, happy Passion Week to everyone. We're so happy to be here again. This is your Crossroads crew. And we are here um, always as we did last month. We had stated that we'll be here once a month, every last Monday. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we promise again that this would be Thought provoking conversations will get to analyze problems, solutions, recourse, make recommendations, and talk about failures and action plans that can make us better as believers, as Christians, as Celestial Church of Christ, as a fold. Okay, um, this is usually um, conversations that we believe would not occur normally on the cool feet or conversations that a lot of of us try to shy away from and so we hope that with this platform we can really iron out and break down things that need to be broken down so we can be a better community in christ uh with me here is the crew um my name is um lizzie davids and i have each crew member here i would pass it over to brother shillon to introduce himself hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, my name is brother shell and it's my pleasure to be here again Brother Bingo, sir. Hallelujah. My name is Uli Bingo Lichubo, and I'm glad to be here again. Thank you, sir. Ezekiel, sir. Hallelujah. Uh, my name is Brad Ezekiel, and I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much. And today we're going to be talking about a very important topic, which is the creed. Yes, you heard that right. The creed, the typical creed that we recite, the article of our faith. Stay tuned as there's going to be a lot of things to learn through the injunction of the Holy Spirit today. I'll pass this on to uh, Brother Wenger to help us with our disclaimer as we shared at the last episode, so we can be aware of accountability expectations while this um, program is ongoing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, Hallelujah. everyone. And uh, we thank you for joining me, and we pray God bless you as you listen to us. So basically, we, our disclaimer, we welcome you first, and we appreciate you for always joining, and we appreciate your expression, and we know you are valuable to us, and we strive to create a meaningful and uplifting experience. Uh, we would like for us to please follow the following guidelines, just for us to be able to serve you more better. And uh, it stayed as follows respectful tones uh we advise everyone joining this program to please maintain respectful and cautious tone in our comments and we create a positive and supportive community where everyone feels welcome relevance to the event uh we and we urge you all to keep your comments relevant to the gospel gathering to this bro uh, broadcast and to keep every information and all your your feedbacks and contribution basically relevant to the event. Uh, also, we urge everyone following and commenting to avoid controversial topics, right? Because our space is for spiritual reflection and to foster unity. So we, we beg everybody to refrain from engaging in discussion on controversies and divisive topics that may distract from the main purpose of the event. Constructive criticism. Uh, we employ everyone, if you do have a feedback, <clears throat> we encourage you to share your feedback constructively with the team and we together can work together to improve and enhance the experience for everyone. Uh, regarding to spam and self-promotion, we urge everybody to avoid posting spams or engaging in self-promotions. We, we employ you to keep the comment section free of unrelated comments that may disrupt the flow of the live stream. And lastly, moderation. Our team will be actively monitoring comments to ensure that they align with these guidelines. Every or all inappropriate comments will be removed and Anybody who 
Thank you so much, Prada Benga. Thank you for those disclaimers. Um, we do hope that together this would bring a wonderful experience to um, each and every one of us as we hark in and listen. Having said that, we have an important announcement that we'd like to make, and this is in regards to our beloved um, souls who have transitioned in Christ and Celestial Church of Christ worldwide. So we're utilizing this opportunity to you know, acknowledge um, the souls of the departed loved ones in our fold that have transitioned in this season. Prayer that, you know, the Lord God Almighty accepts their soul into his beloved bosom and that, of course, they reign with him in his kingdom. Amen. At this juncture, uh, Brother Sherwin would um, take us through the next phase of today's conversation. And if we are able, we will greatly appreciate it if we can observe a one minute silence for all of our loved souls who have transitioned. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. We pray that the spirit of all the departed find peace and may God be here and be with the family. Amen. Sister Liz, over to you. Thank you Decree. so much. I believe in God. The Father, Father Almighty, Almighty Creator of the heaven and the earth, and in Jesus Christ, Holy Son, His only Son, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, and he descended into hell. On the third on the day, day, he rose again from the dead. He rose again from the dead. He ascended, he ascended into heaven. heaven. I believe he is seated, seated on the right hand of right God, the Father Almighty. Almighty. From, from thence, from the he shall come to judge the living, the living and, and the dead. dead. I, believe I believe in the Holy Ghost, the communion of saints, the Church of Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints. Resurrection, Resurrection of the body, of the body and, and life, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Prayer by the Samona. Je over. Holy Jesus Christ. Holy Michael. Holy. I like your lorry, Jeffy. I do pray when you fool your fellow catcher, but I go where I am. Glory to your own book where I am. Glory to your own book where I am. Glory to your own book where I am. Amen. <laughs> What I I'm suspecting you. It won't know what does it borrow a drabby. Who among us have prayed like this before? Who among us have had prayers like this? Like the person who is making that prayer understand the purpose of that prayer. It won't know what. Or maybe in our parishes, when we are growing up, 
who among us know someone that prays this way either the youths or the elders or shepherd or whoever who among us let me ask you brashio because i'm gonna make the prayer now brashio i bet you pray i think you pray like that also Lori Boraguenga Olua Bagwa. Lori and it all bad round. Amen. There's something interesting about the Yoruba uh, prayers, you know. It's it's it just hits deep. Do you get it? It hits deep. And uh I enjoy it a lot. And depending on how the spirit uh stares us or stares me to pray. I think recently I just find myself are always switching to Yoruba. And I'll give you a boom 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 over here. Sister Lizzie, the loimbo. Sister Lizzie, over to you. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Pay out this so well in the name of Jesus. Oh, um, but yes, I appreciate you, um, Brother Shell. And <laughs> honestly, Brother Benga, the questions that you asked, I'm going to be watching Bataki. Because I, as, as as a person, as a child growing up in this church, this these were prayers that I was used to. And, you know, for me, the creed was like a default. You know what I mean? Like growing up right from childhood. And then you would see people, I don't, I did not understand what it was, but some people would shake, some people would move, you know. I'll be wondering what really is touching those people, causing them to shake and move as they recite this creed. Then as I grew up and I started understanding the, the basis of the creed and you know the, the, the words, then I realized pay creed and so ye I don't see it. So I go back to my childhood and I'm like, people say it, but Nigba Yangola walk on sorrow. They are in a barricade or something. Nigba Yangola walk on this Latin Mary, you know, in the church that there is no decorum, the required decorum for the creed's recitation i don't see it and apart from that i see a lot of our beloved worshipers in the 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s with all due respect that the lord god almighty has bestowed unto us and honor i see that the fruits that we expect from the recitation of the articles of our faith the fruits are not in tandem with the articles that are recited what people do and what people say they do not have any sort of harmony or alignment then it comes to it comes to my mind and I, I begin to ask questions like as christians as believers as celestials when would we get to a point where we become less on christ-like and we become very christ-like i'm gonna put that another way when does the creed stop being a routine Right? Nigba wola ma beri sin so pa lu eti she i beru lu watin je ek pile she wago. When would we start talking about it and reciting it like we truly believe it? And move from that moment of unconscious recitation and switch intentionally to conscious recitation. Kwe ah, ti imba ti she a she she. I know the Lord will have mercy upon me, but I cannot just come and think the Lord did not see me. Alleluia, ayoloje, right? Bi moti rita rijiba, mi bi ki bi ti mo ba wa ma ho ya je su wa ni be. Brother Shemusa, you said I am the label. I hope with these few points of mine, juxtaposing your Yoruba and English together, I have been able to convince and not confuse you. Yeah. <laughs> I can speak some Yoruba. Over to you, sir. Hey, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh sister lizzie has actually done a wonderful job uh responding to a one in long man bad rabbi and taking it uh beyond that uh, i think we should first before we delve into this script or the topic or the what we have today uh, we need to know what the background of the creed uh, is. Where did it come from? How did it start? And I tried to look up or uh, to do a little research about it. And I realized, because growing up, I thought it was uh, a celestial thing. 
uh, we find it in the order of service. And, you know, at that point, we just see a Jehovah Gbo, Mugwa Oluwa, Baba Elid Marigbo, you know, Oluwa Baba Elid Marigbo. And so I just felt it was one of those things we read. And uh, as I grew older, I realized that even the Catholic Church, they recite it. Uh, I had friends from the, is it the Baptist Church, they recite mm -hmm. it. Then it became, oh, is it an Orthodox Church thing? So looking out, I, I, I decided to go look out for information of that. So first I found that uh, the creed uh, was an article uh, coined from the teachings of the apostles of those days. And different sources gave different timelines. So some said it began in, in the third uh, century church, some the fourth, fifth, sixth. But uh, it was coined out from the beliefs of the first century uh, apostles. And they actually called it the rule of faith then. Uh, it was a premise in which their faith lied upon. So uh, all of these lines that formed the creed were things the apostles believed in, and that was what they thought. So it was, it was more or less the summary of their belief, their teachings, and that was what people carried from those centuries to now. So the, the Roman Catholic Church first incorporated it, and there was something interesting in it that at the point of baptism, I found that very interesting. It becomes some sort of interrogative uh, statement. So if before you're baptized, they ask, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty and creator of heaven and earth? So the one to receive the baptism will say, yes, I do. Then they go further to ask, do you believe in Jesus Christ as the only son, our Lord, who was born by the Virgin Mary, crucified, suffered under Apostles Pilate? So the person responds, and says, yes, I do. And I really found that very interesting because for us as a people, uh, it, it was just normal thing we recite. And if we realize that this becomes a confessional uh, statement that this is what we profess and confess, just as in service, uh, we do, oh Christ, oh my King, uh, as a form of our confession, who would believe, you know, oh Christ, oh my King, and you see some people put their hands up, you see some people are, you know, their eyes are well closed and they're trying to connect to those statements. I think the creed also should, uh, should be taken from such light and all of that. So that was a little thing. I, there's so much, you know, uh, Roman languages, Roman names, I want to spare us that jargons. Uh, my point is it began uh, between the third and the sixth century, and it was the rule or article of faith of the apostles, and that was how that was what they made the early churches believe in, and that's what they confessed each time. So, uh, uh Rabuenga, I throw well, it to you. Sir. Okay, um, you, 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 you give a very good defined understanding because I've never done like a uh, in depth search. And um, I want to give back to what Sister Lizzie said that when do we move from, well, she used a gamma from unconscious recitation to conscious recitation. Conscious. Yeah, that's, that's a very big one because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I fall short under this one because sometimes that's when, as a chorister, you are trying to tune your guitar or you say, Oh, do you remember the song, the intro for Pre Salmon? Sometimes, you know, so sometimes mm -hmm. we get distracted. Our media team trying to set the camera up. So, I mean, I fall short in that. Day. But uh, I remember when I was growing young, we see people, even till now, the way they recite it. And uh, I'm sorry to say this a disclaimer. Um, I'm not against anybody. Uh, I'm from the Levite family. But you see many men of God who are supposed to who reference to this statement or, or article of faith. And you believe, and you look like oh, they they should be a reflection of what the, of what the of what they're saying, right? But uh, the shameful thing is, 
what we see today in the church because sorry to say use this word sometimes i tell people that uh the ungodly the idol worshiper sometimes are more better than us christians so i said that the way we behave because the things we behave and i don't see someone who would say something i believe in god the almighty the creator of heaven and earth and jesus christ is only son right and um, if you look at the Ten Commandments very well, it was well stated. But when Christ came, Christ summarized into two. Two. Basically, love, first one that came, love God, right? And love your neighbor. In the Ten Commandments, it, was, it started with, uh, it started with God first. But when Christ came, let it down to two. Now, if we say we believe in Christ, the question is, all the shenanigans we see today in the Christian dome, using Saleh as a case study, where is it coming from? We see many people who who are supposed to be a model, and they complain that with the younger generations, I mean, this is not an excuse for with the younger generations, because this brings me to a conscious thinking that Whoever is standing now should be careful because many of these, our fathers and mothers, probably when they started like your us also, they were standing firm. But along the line, they missed it somewhere. But we still recite the article of faith today and we pray as if we are the next Jesus. We are the assistant pastor. We are the assistant Jesus. My question from what Salizi said, I'm about just created now. Yes, it's an article of faith. Like we are calling, like a song we say, Jesu, Emi, Yo, Sinyon, Nibi, Mi, Mo, Yi, Lan, Jolare. They're similar to me with the creed. Now, how did we get here today in Christianity? You didn't say that's a case study. Because if you say you recite the creed and you go on that pulpit to preach, what comes out of your mouth? They would say, uh, listen to what comes out of my mouth. Don't look at me. That means you yourself, as you, what is your character, your behavior is not what emulating. Then why are you going to the pulpit to preach? Mm. Then why are you reciting mm. the creed? Because God. if you look at the Bible, I'm coming. If you look at the Bible very well, the Bible made it clear to us about the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the power of the Holy It's not the power of the Spirit. You see, can you me more? A swear me more? So, as Celestians, can you so to one? I'm not perfect, right? But I'm striving day out to get into a place of uh, self consciousness. Our humility doesn't define us as Christians, it is our mind. Abi, our conwa, lessinwa. Some people will quote it like that. But look at the idol worshippers. One of my spiritual fathers, he made a clear statement. He said, This was early in the 70s. When we were that song, wherever he is now, God will heal him and bless him for me. He said, She has seen land, she has seen land, she will be a sin. Only you could yard do a sin law. Only land, but I'm not going to anybody. But those words from there, that means it has been from the days of the old, from when Babu was young, right? Now, today, it has now become an article of the day. And read the creed. She, I want to go to the world, like I said, a warning on what most of us. Both young and old. How is our life reflecting? So back to your question, Mr. Lizzie. Moving from conscious, I was your when do you move to conscious recitation? But even if you move to conscious recitation, does it change the fact that yes, at that moment we can wholeheartedly J swim yo senior? But next thing, brush on step on me, look we ah what she only my talo for group. Which is what we see between our fathers today. We see among them today that, oh, it is my own. I must take it. And you're preaching. 
are we bringing people to christ are we bringing people to the fold or we are using our mouth the power the giggle has given us how is that reflecting in what we speak as the how is that reflecting in what we speak as the creed Brashio, let me throw it back to you because you throw it back to me <laughs> Okay, I realize uh, Braizika is just hanging somewhere there, and I, I, I don't want it to seem as if he's uh, a second party in this discussion. Uh, Braizikel, Iwawa, Ishewa, how do we just oppose using Sister Lizzie's lingua? How do we just oppose it with I believe in God, the Father Almighty? Hmm. That's, that's a big question. Uh, we thank God. You know, uh, I'll start like this. In my family now, whenever we have family devotionals, uh, can everybody, everybody can hear me, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we have family devotionals now, my dad has begun to do something that at first it annoyed me, but now I understand the reason. Whenever we get to the point where we pray and it's the Lord's Prayer, you know, we we just, we like to rush through the Lord's Prayer, you know, just rush through it. But my dad will stop us and say, slow, go back, do it slow. So, because most of the prayers that we pray now, when it comes to the Lord's Prayer, maybe Psalm 51, where we have to recite it, or the creed or anything like that, unfortunately, it's become something like an incantation, where we don't... Our, our our brain, my my mentor there, Dr. Ak uh, Akonji, would say our uh, our medulla oblongata, <laughs> where most of our brain, we don't even use most of our brain with the words that we speak. So we just speak anyhow, subconscious and unconsciously, right? And I think this stems from, you know, sometimes when you over-familiarize yourself with something, it becomes nothing. It becomes something, you know, it becomes devalued, you know? So in most people, most worshipers nowadays, especially in Celestial Church of Christ, let's, let's stick with Cel Celestial Church of Christ. Although I've worshipped in Pentecostal, I've worshipped with Caucasian, I worked, I worshipped with uh, African-American and so on and so forth. I was saying Celestial Church of Christ, where our church and our sanctuary should be a palace. People have become too familiarized with the king of that palace. So now they have, they just do anyhow. No more reverence, no more humility, no more uh, decorum, no more, um, what's the word? No more respect, no more, you know, no more <laughs> majestic. I don't know what, what, what word to use. <laughs> no, we're not majestic anymore. You would see the days of old, of our elders of old, of old, the elders of old, of old that, you know, the way that they would dance, the, the way that they would walk, it would be as if they would glide. They don't mash their feet down as if they're stomping to go to the gym. They don't mash their feet down as if they own the place. They're majestic in their walking. They walk like angels. They barely even place their feet all the way to the ground. But nowadays, we just, even in the service, we walk around anyhow like, like I'm sorry to say, like fools and animals. Because only an animal and fool in the wilderness will believe that, you know, we can we can go anywhere because <laughs> let me stop. Because we can we can just do it anyhow, right? Wow. So instead of instead of instead sorry, should I should I stop there or continue? No, no. Sir? no please land. Okay. Okay, sir. So instead of the reverence and humility, right? Most of the prayers, right, have become kind of like incantations. Where, you know, in religion, Christianity is not a religion. In religion, right, you, you, you offer sacrifices to appease a deity, right? Whereas Christianity is more about the relationship. We, we, we seek relationship with God, right? So that's why we're entering into the sanctuary every Sunday. But nowadays, we have turned Christianity in a relig into a religion, into sacrifices and... and uh, and that's where hypocrisy is coming into play and stuff like that. So it's it's a deep it's a deep thing. But I'll just I'll just stop there, sir. Sister Lily, uh, yes, I have I have something I I don't know why I choose to throw this at you. And if I say I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
I, I, or rather, if I hear you say you believe in God, the Father Almighty, should there be certain expectations uh, I would look at from someone that believes in God? So what are the expectations we, we, we want to see? The expectations we have from someone that professes his belief in God, the Father Almighty. I think I'm okay. Okay, I believe you're back. Can you hear me now? Absolutely. Okay. Can you hold a second, please, Sister Lizzie? Can you please sure. hold a second? Yeah. Uh, to our viewers, uh, we also want to let you know this is a calling program. Our numbers will going to are going to be put on screen, and in a few minutes we would open up the numbers for calls. So we just want you to know that, and you can also bring in your, uh, throw in your, your contribution, Sister Lizzie. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, um, Brother Shell. Thank you, Brother yeah. Ezekiel, for the <laughs> that breakdown. Because I like it when we we have problems, we'll break down the problems, right? And because we yeah. we have to see it the way it is. And I love to sing. So permit me. I have two hymns. Onikoba mi wala, right? Kofu wala roshi. That's one. The second one is Esi Oluwa Beluwi Beru Esi Beluwa Kolare Oluwa Jowawa Siwalo Sodore. Right? What are the expectations of? when 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 i say i believe in god so i believe in god the father almighty i am saying i am submitting my will and i am letting god the father god the son god the holy ghost take over i am saying that i am presenting myself daily not selectively i am saying i am presenting myself daily as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable before the lord right i am saying that i am not i am no longer being tossed back and forth by the doctrines of men but i am letting the word of the lord which is the sword of the spirit right i am letting that guide my decision making processes i believe in god the father i am saying that i do not believe in man because vain is man and we know that the Bible says woe unto those who trust in men, right? I'm saying that I am putting my trust in God, knowing that everything he does is good. I am not second guessing my God, my Father Almighty, right? I am saying he's the maker of heaven and earth who created me and irrespective of what he does with my life, I submitted myself to him, right? And because I submitted myself to him, I have faith in him because the bible says that those who would even come to god first of all they must believe that he is right and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him so i have done my assignment making sure that i position myself daily in seeking god in my thoughts in my deeds in my actions in the things i listen to in the things i talk about i'm making sure that my tongue and my speech stays seasoned with salt I'm making sure I live my life not in false hypocrisy, right? But I live my life in the manner that the world will see my life, see the fruits, and glorify the Lord God Almighty in heaven. I see myself as an ambassador of the kingdom, and I cannot bring blemish to my father. So when I have that perspective, I must not bring blemish to my father. The same way I will guard my earthly father's last name. It's the same way I would guard my father in heaven's name, in whom the world sees me. Does that make sense? Absolutely, Sister Lizzie. And this doesn't happen by our intellect. This happens by the Holy Spirit's direction in us, right? Because we say we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. That is to say that even though, even though, me only yes, right? Me but see, don't worry, 
ni igba ti idan o ba de ma yo ma gba dura tori pe mo mo pe ise olorun be pelu mi i believe in god the father almighty mi o de ni yo e se i would not turn back lati fi enu mi soro o de si enikeji and i will not turn back and go and worship baal and i'm not creating myself so there is a long list all of that compounded together is submit yourself to the lord resist the devil and it will flee from you uh, Sister Lizzie, i'm tempted to ask a question please sir. oh i have two people needing to ask me questions Hallelujah. Please, Rachel, ask me. before you ask any <laughs> question you yours i'm still back to you because <laughs> you can't you can't keep turning the table around eh? and be asking people question and you you want to talk i'm coming back to you because that's why i'm saying don't don't ask any question that you yourself based on what you've been asking us what are your thoughts hmm. so i believe in god the father almighty i, I Emma, think Emma, don't do that though. <laughs> just imagine just imagine just you could you when you want to ask questions you could see the energy in him all of a sudden, he's not trying to be, you know. Okay. Uh, how do you believe in a God you do not know first? I believe in God, the Father Almighty. And if we would just oppose that with what we see in people. Just oppose. Hey. So when we just oppose that, with what we see people do. And honestly, nobody has appointed us to be judge of people's character. But even the Bible says, judge every spirit. We should judge it. So, as Christians, we can first do self-appraisal first. I, that I, I profess that statement, I believe in God, Father Almighty. Do I know the God I believe in? Because I think a lot of people do not know the God they believe in, and that is why their reactions and inactions to the same God is, is very, very unbalanced. You believe in God, the Father Almighty. I want to read a scripture from Second Peter. He said, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people have not grown. That's why I asked that question. Do you know the Lord you profess that you believe in? If you believe in God, the Father Almighty, then you would understand the dictates and the expectation from God. What God expects from you as a believer. If I go join a cult, the cult, no, no, if I'll go join an organization, they would give me their rules and regulation. For you to survive in this place, this is our set of beliefs. These are the things we uphold. This is what the one, the one in whom we see as the supreme being, this is what he expects from us. And it becomes my decision to say, okay, I'm going to be in or out. So we have a lot of Christians that lift holy hands, that confess this statement, and yet what we see from, from them. We believe in God, the Father Almighty. We are very unforgiving as a people. So I want to know King Bagwe will tell when you are for the celestial song now. Oh, but <laughs> this is in you, right? Sister Lizzie, oh, let's not go there. The, the Bible said, Oma Beshe Baba Ulara Omo. That's him, God. So go back, be. But you want to go there. But that doesn't mean that we as Christians, we should now use it invertedly. But if you want to go there, God is not a God that's for guest things so let's leave you there <laughs> so in this context obati king bagbe so i want to know obati king bagbe i got a bagbe what that person that's did, wickedness during jerry moyama he stepped upon me 10 years ago could they sorrow you want to know me 
So when I have the opportunity, yet our father said, if we would request or seek for mercy, we must equally be merciful unto others. Yes. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Onkuro, you are a liar. You are a murderer. You nurse evilly against your fellow humans. Yet, every almost every service we recite it, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Even if Jesus comes down to beg me, I will not. And you said, you believe in Jesus Christ, the only son of our Lord. You will stand on the name of Jesus and say, over my dead body. So when we, when we just oppose our confession with our actions, then we can find the imbalance in it. Is it so? That's why I wanted to ask a question before you guys sent that question to me. And the question would have been, and Brizikel, I think you are my right hand guy, so I will send it to you. Is it that people have not believed, or some people do not know the God they, they confess to believe? Or where is the disconnect or disconnection? Where is it coming from? Hmm. Ah, man. The disconnect, where is the disconnect coming from? Well, let's see. The disconnect could be coming from so many places, in my opinion. Um, one, the disconnect could be coming from that those individuals that misbehave or that confess that they believe in God the Father, yet they do wickedness and perpetrate evil. One, they've already become cast outs. Mm. They've already become cast outs. Uh, what's that song that we sing? God has already sent them out. So they've already been sent out. And now, you know what Jesus Christ said about the Pharisees and Sadducees? Woe unto you, you are cursed. You already, you yourself, you're not going through the through the door. And now you want to deprive others from going through that door. Woe unto you, Pharisees and Sadducees. Right? They've already been cast out. That's, that's why David would say in Psalm 51, cast me not away from your, from your presence and take not that Holy Spirit away from me. Imagine how many bodies in, in, in our church nowadays, right? That we see the body. They have, we see the body, but inside they've already been dead. They've already been cast out of the presence of God. And they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. That's one that I can think of. Let's see. Number two. Uh, they were never converted in the first place. Oh. They were ne never converted in, this, in the first place. And unfortunately, that, a, a lot. You can say that about a lot of people in church nowadays. Because, like I said, they only see church as like a ritual. You just go. You go oh, through yeah. the flow of it. Do what you have to do. Get out. Is there any transformation? No. Is there any sanctification? No. Yeah, we do. You know, the women would do monthly yasimimo. Men too will will take uh woman from the door and will sprinkle on her head. And do, hey, just soon. And that's sanctification. So, <laughs> no sanctification, no transformation. Right. The whole essence of going to church is that every time you go to church, there should be and intertwining with you and the creator. So as so like every time you go, you're slowly being transformed into Christ. You're, you're becoming more and more of Christ in that fellowship. But yeah, it doesn't happen today. So I would say that those are the two things. There's cast outs. Some of them have already become sons of perdition where they're, they are doomed for destruction. There's so many things that we can speak about. So I, 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 but I'll stop there, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Basha, can I say something, please? Because... Uh, After you, Brad Benga. <laughs> some things I don't want to go to before, but where Brazika mentioned, uh, I think I will open up a bit because the song we sing is, like I said, any bad they call me, by to put right now. What, what are we experiencing now? <laughs> Brazika made two points about is it that they are being casted away or they basically were not in line with the Christ teachings before now? I'm sorry to say this. 
uh, I'm happy that I was born in the church and I grew up to have some opportunity in this church, seeing some things happen and hearing some things foretold from foster information. For example, I'm, I will use Celeste as a case study, even though it goes to Christianity. Celeste as a church, a lot of people that grew up, the founder then, that would think, after we was taking Baba, Bada, Adanle Koko, Agbausi, and some few others, many that followed Papa Oshofa then were not in tune with Christ. And why we say this is that because many were after the miracles of the pastor founder, they were not in tune with what brought the act, which is the word, because many of them were not filled with the word. They were following the signs and wonders. They could tell the story and the history of how this happened in the church. But when you ask them to come and pray or preach, they can't deliver. And at that time also, we have many who could deliver the word of God. For example, in those days, when Sele was still Sele, when we don't have shepherds that have bere or so I use this word or by the other that we are they are all have bante in their in their waist and have gone astray. When they say shag bamej sele, no matter how, how terrible that going is, when the Adamaj comes together and they pray for you, when they say Jehovah Jesus Christ, before they finish, they'll go and salo. But what do you have today? But in the church, we still have people reciting the creed. I believe in the Father Almighty. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I don't want to go to this angle, but like I said, many of them are forgotten. And these are the people we have today in church, in churches in Sele. How will you say you believe in Christ? You believe in God, you follow the teaching of God, and you have unforgiveness in you. You are fighting over position. I have been in the position for the past 20 years, I've been in the position for the past 100 years. I'm the stamp pastor, I'm the stamp post. And how is that Christ like? We have different divisions in churches, in parishes. The chairman, parochial committee, the secretary, the treasurer are against themselves. You are against parochial committee chairman, shepherd against the authority, authority against not listening to the shepherd. And we are talking about we still have these people. We stretch up our hands. Many animal oh, no, this week. No, no, no. They went to come and do it. Was what is this now? The washing of the feet. All these are tied together. We do the creed, right? And this is it. We are doing washing of the feet, Abby. And on Thursday, they will still eat communion. But Borashew is my enemy. We are fighting for the same position. In my mind, I have faced somebody in Nigeria to finish him. In their mind, they have faced somebody in Agonga in Badagri to destroy one man in their parish. And you see that Christ like. And it's I don't the same cellar. In the same cellar, in the same Christianity. And you're talking about the creed. Abi, oh, they said, I said, more bono of a little my go, and let down why if you believe in the let down why then you understand that that was that will be a day that you sleep and you don't wake up again. If you believe in that let down on why yeah, then you realize that everything you're doing now is vanity. I remember a story that I heard and I experienced when I was younger. I swear similar to a shepherd in this church who had you know what they call Bante? <laughs> he used to believe that he said his dear. What dirani? What dirani? And <laughs> something happened, you know, area boys. Area boys showed him pepper. So when they came to attack, he, he, he ran across the gutter. But mind you, the taboo of that charm is that Kogudo for Gota must not cross gutter. Kogudo Damu Koda. You see where it is? But when God wants to show him that God is, is powerful, that's an apple and a cross, and they beat this man blue black. And when they ask him, ah, Baba, Jirani, ah, honey, ah, but you forgot, honey. And you call yourself a man of God, right? In the same church. Now, that has proven to him that God is greater than everybody. And we're talking about the creed, the word of God. And these are the people we have in church today, as youth, as elders. So, brother, it can said something about it. He said, Is it that God has forgotten them? Or they were never in tune with Christ. But if God has forgotten them, that we that we think we are standing, like I said earlier before, that we should be careful 
so that we don't fall. Now, they mm -hmm. are our leaders. They are in our front. And they are doing things. And we are seeing them. How are we sure? Very sure. Kini se ubento mpe mno luwa o luwa. Nyo ba mi wo jo ba on. And the fruit of the spirit is so me. Luwa la la wo. We have people in the church today. We are talking about idol worshippers. From the days of Papa Oshofa. Baba Danko. We have shepherd in this church. Oh, we know that they, are, they, they belong to Ogbonu fraternity. Oh, the what has it been done about that? And we still do the creed in this same church, right? In this parents in this celestia, as a popular man of God in this celestia, right? That we know that he belongs, everybody knows that he belongs. He's the only clergy in Celeste that has his own type to separate. I'm not going to mention him, right? It's like, we want to break this table. But the point is, we still do the creed together. And we have people in authority that will say, I believe in Father Almighty. We will go to Mimeko, we will say, Jesu, I will do all on Yagola Mari. So, what is the what is all these things? So, my point, my point is this, this has been from the age of our fathers, right? And it's now. So, I'm not about how your face is. You can cry when you are doing the creed, but what is the fruit of your hand? That's my word. Braguinga, Bra Bra uh, you landed on the exact thing I wanted to say. and it would have been to Sister Lizzie because I was about calling her and say, uh, Sister Lizzie, come, let's reason together. I, I want to share a very short experience I had, I think it was last year or two years ago. So I went to a particular parish uh, to for the washing of feet and uh, uh, an elder female was supposed to wash the feet of the lower ranks or some other women. But I realized nobody went to her for that feet washing. And I, I started to ask myself certain questions. And what came to me was, what are the fruits or the fruit, the, the, the Bible calls it the fruit of the spirit, but one fruit that produces several. I said, what are the fruits she has choose? What are the fruit that comes from her? And uh, how do we, again, just suppose the fruits of the spirit <laughs> that thing that comes because those are the things we easily see from some from people that say they believe in god so does the fruit of the spirit does it have anything to do with our confession as children of god of or as believers of god our line also is opened i think at this point we can also get uh, people's opinion and views on this topic. Yeah. Very brief question of conversion. Maybe it's for Salis O'Brien. Is it can answer this question? I would do oh, aside from the creed though, because the creed is a topic. But I want to say, oh, Christ, oh, by me, a me, you senior. Clotelli. So who's who? Who's a bad at Mole or Long Abbey? Any me more, me more, Julo. Then, question is that it Bobo Yapatawan Lenny, you know, Joe. UK Dowsies, US Dowsies, Nigerian Dowsies, Trusty, Immunity in your con, Immunity in your con. How does it justify? How does it justify what you do? Oh, Christ, oh, my king. I'm not for anybody, I'm for Christ, right? And I'm proud to say that I'm for Christ. But how do we hand this over to this generation and to the next generation? Kill and call. If I may. For the people who are online, who are watching us, how do we resolve this issue? Because that's, that's what I'm going to. How do we resolve this issue? How do we identify the true worshippers, the true celestials, the true priesthood, the true men of God? Not just because they will be crying and be doing, oh Christ, oh my King. Hmm. So if i may so there are two questions on ground there's a question about how the articles of our faith how it aligns with the fruits of the spirit and the fruits of our works right just oppose that... just oppose <laughs> don't align just oppose it okay how we can juxtapose between the mm -hmm. articles of our faith and it looks like the highlight for tonight is juxtaposed yes it's the word for the day 
the article of our faith and the fruits of the spirit. Actual word. Right? And then the second piece is what um, Brother Benga just mentioned, right? How can we make it, you know, how can we make it make sense with all the divisions and we reciting Agbarati, Molemi, and then all the vanities? Jeremiah chapter 11, right? I'm starting from verse 9. And the Lord said unto me, Jeremiah, a conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Verse 10 says, they are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words, right? And they went after all the gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers, right? Therefore, thus said the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. Just in case we feel like people can hide, right? Just in case people think that there can be any hiding in this business of Christendom, right? It says, I'll bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. I will go quickly to Jeremiah 8, verse 19. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. I'm reading these verses for a good reason. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not the Lord in celestial? Right? Is not a king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? Right? Only a ray, did I tap you one in the job? Right? Why? Why? Why were we called? And why are we even in this great fold? And it's not a cult, right? It's it's a when it pay to attack for me, it pay all land more you just logo. This is fashion week, right? And it has become repetitive. We are a lot of celestials wait until the, the length, right? Start the last length of fashion week, and then we, we get ourselves together and we quote unquote put up false fear of God for the length so that we can eat the communion and all of that. If we say that I believe in the Holy Ghost, the celestial church of Christ, the communion of saints, I sometimes look around for communion in our parishes. Talk less of in our fold, right? How can we juxtapose fruit of the spirit and the articles of our faith? Part of the fruit of the spirit, joy, love, long suffering, perseverance. I look for these things in our parishes. Listen. Amongst us as youth, I still look for it. Sometimes it's like maybe when you are beginning to try to at least, it's like you're doing too much. Since when did practicing the ordinance of Christ become doing too much? Should be we a juxtaposition. Then if if we do not understand at this point that the Lord knows his own. And the, his horn would hear his voice and they would not miss it, right? If we do not understand at this point that the more we do the things that we are not supposed to do, we are repeating what happened when Christ came and when Christ was flogged and beaten. We cannot begin to juxtapose articles of creed of our faith with fruits of the Spirit. Neither can we have a basic understanding of the root cause because we're trying to do problem analysis. We cannot mm -hmm. understand the root cause of why we are where we are at in this fold. We have to go back to the basis, which is which type of God was sold and marketed to the people? <laughs> Do you, you understand? Which type of God was marketed to the people coming into this fold, first of all? Was it the God of Banjo Mogbede Lofe Lofe Balag Banjo Mogbede? Or is it the God that would only reward you right when you bring something really big to him mm. or is it the god that likes you for the things you declare openly in church and does not like you and detest you right for the things you cannot do or do they market the god that took the widow's might for who she was 
the God that told others to say he, he was not committed a sin should cast the first stone. Which God do we market in our home? We are very quick. I'm going to say this. I say this with all honor and humility without any sort of insult to anybody's pedigree. When a new member comes to our fold, it isn't every parish that observes the important Jesu long Mabo. In my perspective, Jesu long Mabo should be followed by the creed because that is the altar call. The creed, the conversation that comes with just look me up, Toto Mabo, should have happened before the sanctification and water sprinkling. We should not let the cat go before the horse. We cannot do just long prayer, Toto Mabo. Take the bucket of water and bath. Now let us sit down and do counseling. Just like you said, Brother Shio, for every organization, there are rules and regulations. You have to sign. HR will give you the documents to sign your employment and employer expectations, then you have to accept or decline your offer. Bring it to church. Jesu long prayer totomabo would not be followed by bucket washing. We will not wash with the bucket. And then before you know it, baptism baptism happens in less than 48 hours so that people can be on their knees to get anointment. What kind of God was marketed to the people? Anyone who is putting on the highest rank of a particular role today, let us go back and the fruits are not working in sync with the evangelist rank that they are putting on or with the uh, crossbar, irrespective of how rainbow like the colors are. How did they get into the fold and were they continuously renewed? Root cause. What kind of sermons did they listen to on the pulpit? Some sermons are Lizzie. what is no 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 uh -uh. I, I think we need to twitch the conversation a little bit i believe the creed now we are on the creed i was still at uh on the i believe in god father almighty let's go to the second part of the decree let's narrow it down Rachel. to where we find Rachel, ourselves hold on. It's new, no hold on it's, we are talking about oh, the, creed. On the creed the first oh, one the one yeah, but what sister this is saying, hold on, you know why what she's saying, right? We should not sit under the under I, the I rock. Think, I think Shara while seeing conversation and go by in officially. Check it. Conversation yeah, conversation got better. I think jump loss. Okay. Just a post now, just a post. Check it. So let, let's put it side by side with something else in the decree. So are we coming back to that topic? Because That's, what where we are going. That's where we are going. That's where we are going. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. At the second or the bottom part of it pushes us to where we will narrow it uh, down to our fold. He says, I believe in the celestial church of Christ. Uh -huh. And if we will believe in the celestial church of Christ, celestial church of Christ gave us tenants. Those tenants in the constitution, bringing it to what Salizi alluded to earlier, that if you would join an organization, you would have a document, you have... Employer ex employee expectation agreement. Ex uh -huh. Employee and expectation book. agreement <laughs> and book, yes. During the onboarding, onboarding process. Process. yes, sir. Yes. So, as a celestial church member, during our own onboarding process, not the 48 hours of Jesus Lope, if they ever did. I heard in the days of old that at your anointment, you will have your constitution with you and the class card with you. How do we anoint people that have not made this confession? How do we anoint people that do not know the basic things that even makes you say you are, you are a member of a place? So I want us to juxtapose the the creed, I believe in the Celestial Church of Christ, with our tenants, we have 12 tenants that 
we as celestial members should abide by. And on Sundays, I think that statement or that phrase has been taken away from it. Because if you will read the constitution, if people read or have ever read that constitution, it says these were revealed by the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit gave the founder, the 12 tenants. I have it here. So the first says, as a member of Celestial Church of Christ, you are forbidden to engage or participate in any form of idolatry, fetish ceremony, or cult, or cult black magic, brushes. or charm. Just start post. Uh, we have an ongoing situation that speaks about uh, the modern day Bar and traditionalist, so culturalist incidents in the church. <sighs> How do we juxtapose these things? The creed, the tenants, and this first clause: celestial church of me or church members are forbidden to engage in idolatry, fetishism, cults, or black magic. Over to I think. Let Let me throw it for Ezekiel first. I don't, I don't even want I'm this question. I don't even want this question. <laughs> ah, well, it's, it's, it's a disheartening and shameful thing. In this celestial church of Christ, where once upon a time, witches and wizards, when they come into this church, they must confess. Where Babalaos are being placed under the authority of Christ. In those days, Babalaos would visit celestial church of Christ to test their power. And those Babalaos would be turned into prophets in those days. But nowadays, you come in as Babalao, you leave as extra powerful Babalao because your crew is in there. So you guys have already supported each other and built each other up. Good job. Now, there's instead of having mothers in celestial church of Christ, mothers in celestial church of Christ, the main mother in that celestial church of Christ, mind you, she's a mother. She wears pink, the biggest lace that you can see. But yet, ask ask what 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 she's doing in people's dreams. Ask 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 people ask ask the congregation. You. Not it's nonsense, it's so annoying, and I think that us in Celestial Church of Christ, uh, I believe that we're a little bit confused. I think that we, we have some sort of like we have amnesia, some there's some mental things that need to be people need to start going to psychologists because what, why, why do you what, what gives you the 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 idea or the ideology that you stay in celestial church of christ there's one leg in and there's one one leg out like lot's wife was it lot's wife that that looked back and turned into uh turned oh. into salt yes sir that's why uh celestial or it says my she image my she way Many, many of us, instead of stepping into celestial church of Christ and become fully converted, we've looked back. We go back to the traditions of our household. God told Abraham, get out of your father's house. Get, get away from all your family. Because in Abraham's, in Abraham's lineage, they, they worship an idol. So God wanted to sanctify the Abraham and bring out his own people out of Abraham's seed. Like how God wants to do for us. They would tell us in Celestial Church of Christ that whenever a convert, a new celestial member enters into the Celestial Church of Christ, not only would the grace of Celestial Church of Christ work on that individual, but their family members too, they would also taste from that deliverance and redemption. But now it's not so. You enter into Celestial Church of Christ and your, your, your siblings and your family, is they're afraid. Maybe you might enter Celestial Church of Christ and you'll get slapped on the face or they'll beat you in church. Or they'll fight you because you don't agree with what they have to say. So it's a, 
<laughs> ah man, is is it deep? Is I don't know. I don't know. Only God can help us. And also, let me let me add this thing too. Remember how I said that God has casted a lot of us out of His presence. Mind you, we will still be in church. We'll still do offering. We'll still give big big tithe. They will still call our name for Allah guy and so on and so forth. But we've been casted out. You know, the day that Saul was casted away from the throne, God gave him, God distributed evil spirit into the life of Saul. I don't know if we, we remember. God, they said, it said that that and, an and evil spirit, spirit from God him. came into him. It is it from God. So you look at some of our, you know, some of us, we'll save some of us so that they won't get mad at us. We'll say some of us in Celestial Church of Christ that have deviated to occultic ways because we have been cast out and God has given us to evil spirits and evil. I pray that it will be well with us in Jesus' name. So that's what I have to say. Hallelujah. Brother Ezekiel, whoever wants to get angry, then get angry. So let's say something. He said, Ki can me, me. That's my new word. If the yes, even though I'm not barely babbing bulu like Brazil, but the the hair in my head accounted, right? I know that nobody can take my life except God. But the question of Russian post is I didn't know that was where I was going to because it took us to a very critical angle. How did we get here? Idol worshiping in the church. And this the question I want to ask is in Celestia Constitution and one of our laws that you must not add a particular aside from your superior senior evangelist or senior evangelist, right? No, no, no. do not. Why do we have today that you see doctor, prophet, senior evangelist, or senior evangelist, doctor, prophet? Where do you have some of them are allergies too? Church? Allergies, exactly. Prince, Prince, right? no one there. Prince. The yeah, Prince, Prince. Yeah, yeah, the question is this we are talking about idol worshiping, it's not only about when you go to Babalawo, but even money is an idol in the church today. And part of the things that the pastor founder said, he said, Owo Ipo, right? Ati, we'll destroy this Ati. church. Ati, Ati Dash, Okoya Kombe. Uku Kono. I use. Yeah? Oh, I own it. Everybody. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Our audience will fill in the blanks. It's okay. Yes, yes, please. please. Uh, yeah. But where I'm going to is this. This has been, like I said earlier on, when Papa was alive, my father, like, my father is my spiritual father. I grew up in it because I was very close to the family. The question is this. We have elders in the church who are known. But is there something about um, a babalao coming to the church and the spirit of God came on him? And he became a prophet. That doesn't mean he's a man of God. This is how we get with missing the church. Because there are people coming to the church and Woli, what fruits came to him? How did we undo that situation? Because he started prophesying. As I said, many in those days were after the miracles that were happening in the church, not the word. Because I dealt Yes, we did. But what did we back it up with? Did we back it up with the word of God? Did we bring them to the light properly for them to understand? So this was talking about somebody came to church today, baptism and lots of that. Hours, when we were, when I was going up, before that, yeah, there's a way we knew it. Before they do, Jesu long put on my book. There are things that we should that there should be done. Cancel and everything must go before that thing, right? But today, reverse the case. Where am I going to? We're talking about idol worshiping in CCC today, in Christendom today. We've missed a, we've missed something very important in the church, which is harvest. Is the core meant for fanfare, for money raising, or for winning souls? Let's ask that question very well. We are talking about idol worship in the church today. Harvest in this church is meant to win souls. That is from the understanding and the teaching that we got from when I was growing up. He called it that's when you go and doing that. We say, uh, 
Maro Gola, you they sell it, me, you they sell it, oh, most you look good, Bella. Then we used to go for evangelism. I remember my mother would cut to battle on the water there. They would say, Yeah, my father would put me on the neck. Street evangelism then. You'll be saying, It don't mean more, no me, you're doing our harvest. You see kings, you see all bars who come to the church, they will spend their money, right? But are them spending their money? They are meeting Christ in the church. What followed it? They come to the church for miracle, right? And when they come in, what are we giving them? Is it a what? Or a me? Even if they are me, kill and before. So in Celestia today, all the things we do are upside down because we fail to understand the principles of God in this church. Celestia, we begin. Mamuti, ma shagberi. Well, because somebody in your family has money, right? And he knows you. Omwa church, yes, honorary. Like we have in Sele, honorary evangelist. They are supposed to what? Is an because of their owo abi. I can't do to our fathers. Father is in the introduced to church. I'll discuss the church today. But the main fact is we have idol worshippers in this church. From the days of our fathers, right? And we know them. Right, right. The ones that we know today that we are different. Oh, yeah, you see them in blue. I've never seen, a, I'm sorry to say, I've never seen people in select where you wear full prophet like this in blue. But we see them today. We have authority members who see these things. Are they corrected? But you, that's you know, you see, I don't, I, I, in fact, let me. Do, Thank you. Thank you, Raguinga. Thank you, Raguinga. Can I? Can I? It's annoying. Applaudies. It's, it's can annoying. I have the mic? Thank you, Raguinga. <laughs> yeah, go oh, ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Lizzie, I know you are tempted. You want to say something? <laughs> I know you want to say something. Ah. Uh, I, I. I gave a scenario, and honestly, it's not for us to come and revisit trends and all of that but i have I, I actually want us to look through this situation the one uh most people that come to christ they come from a place do you get what i'm saying paul was saying I like Billy, that we all search where we where we came from. But it took the grace of God to redeem us. So it is okay. 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 It is okay for thieves, rogues, and all sorts to come. But should they go back the way they come the, the way they came should they that's the question now on this situation we found uh, ourselves it's a trendy thing and i've seen a lot of people cast as passion on this figure i've seen people murder this person in words and where do we see the failures of the church sister lizzie over to you Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, I would just like to, I guess, utilize the medium to let our audience understand that this conversation, you remember when we started Crossroads, we said it's going to be a dialogue where we dissect problems, Matters. solutions. We talk about root causes. We talk about recommendations, Matters. failures, and then come to action plans so we can better our fold we can be better believers we can be better christians that we can Absolutely. behold ourselves in the mirror and we can see that we are being transformed from glory to glory right that we will be able to leave a legacy that would not lead to the total destruction of those coming behind us right so again as a had on disclaimer this is not to throw stones because in the end when you paint one in a glass house to buy food, right oh my but this this talks to us this is shared responsibility Absolutely. collective accountability we are calling ourselves in and calling ourselves out to your questions russia only back back palace and lazio no i keep 
fun yin jomo lati oruwa oni ijo yi ni yo we aye mo oni a je osho yo wariri la be agbara ijo yi right then you know sometimes when we sing that song people would be quote unquote under the anointing and all of that but the the agbara is not in the song the agbara is in the inspiration of the holy spirit that birthed the song the Agbara is not in the Bible we carry around. The Agbara is in the word of the Lord that we know that is sharper than a two-edged sword, right? That is able to pierce the body, soul, and spirit, search out the deepest thoughts of the heart. That is where the Agbara is in. We have issues in Jomimo. Oni, in Jomimo ebusia yo fojo ida jono toma deo. You see the antithesis? Because the current status of our Jomimo Ah, le busay of what your joy that you know today because of the one Malika Bagbe marking board. Ah, who shall yeah. stand if the Lord should begin to mark sins? Do you understand? So, Pashe Kori Waton Jumo, one little time, Jota and Lugongo, Kama Road that Jew is Jamima Bawon Niachewa Diokonwasi, right? Only Pashaga at the Agbele. See, it is important that we analyze these things so that we can organize our priorities. I was saying something about the sermons that come from the pulpit. What kind of God was marketed to people that are now members of this fold? That is the mm -hmm. foundational issue. If the kind of God that was marketed to them was the God of healing and miracles only, the expectation is that as they got that milk, that when we start attending church, that we begin to grow and we begin to eat meat at some point. Only when I was young, there were certain things I did. As I grew, there was a modification to my sensibilities. We need a renewal of sensibilities. Bro, Ezekiel said something that there should be some psychological assessment on a lot of issues and a lot of personalities in our fold. By the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? And only Shegunla will not renew what our was to be humble. Only Terry by Johnny Money, I should do, let I should do, yeah, at the barrel alone. It's like we are now enemies to I should do at the barrel alone. Do you understand? So, where have we failed? And I'm not saying this as an authority over the fold, I'm saying this as a passionate youth that looks forth for the legacy that we need to leave for children that sees aspects of my life that certain tutelage turned upside up in the name of jesus and the lord god of us pulled me to realign that tutelage so i can see the light and i can share the light with the world i am speaking mm -hmm. from that perspective so that the highs of the world can be enlightened right as christ was sent because as he is so are we in this world the word of god coming out of our pulpit needs to be spiritually upgraded because if the word of god coming from the pulpit is is spirit based if the pulpit is not used as an avenue for exhibiting vendetta and exhibitionism mm. if half of the words that come out of the sermon is not throwing shades at people in the church if we stick to going back to the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say to you? What is your word for your people today? If we don't compete with the someone that we had somebody else say in parish five, and now we want to brag with our own someone in parish seven, Shari, misplacement of priorities is a big sickness and an issue. If the, the word at the entrance of the word of God, there is light. That is the principle. This principle does not change, sir. We cannot have the word of God that is genuine and true every Sunday and be the same, sir. Mm. It's supposed to pierce our hearts. So if you do just long prayer thought and you drank milk, you saw healing and miracles, and 
And for 10 years, you've been listening to word of God from the pulpit by different on-screen summoners, but they are wearing yellow and blue, purple and green. The colors are not the issue. Neither are the layers the issue. It is a mitom balea in you. Nick Pase, who is anointing who? A mitom balea in you. Nick Pase, what is my mindset for getting anointment? A mitom balea in you. Nick Pase, competitions. Any yet, it's back color yellow, my love, but purple. The spirit, it creates portals. When there is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, it creates portals for the enemy. Lati Shesho. Jesus Christ, Lea could joke us in what could burn in what could yaki and one yet and what could dictate the quality of the word of God that comes out of the prophet. Because we have to understand, pay get get be assured you whether you are a shepherd or not. If you have a role in this fold as a member, you have a role. The responsibility is on your shoulder. You need people. Paul said, If the meat I eat will cause my brother to stumble, I better stop it. That was Apostle Paul. I better stop it. Right? That was what he said. So if we don't get to the... I'm, I'm standing on the word of God that comes out of the pulpit as an avenue to branch out to the other failures. But it starts from the word of God. Because if we know the word of God truly, help me from presumptuous sins and help me from blood guiltiness <laughs> ah sister lizzie hallelujah 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 mm. if i have been in church for 10 years taba wo ilano when you pay every three years abi so momu milk the first three years mogba first rank motu mu milk be a serilak with another kind of milk Moba second rank. Moba see, I'm allowed. We do there too soft. Next. Next. As on top. We do. Do you understand? Yeah. At top bed. Moba bad third rank. Moba bad third rank. My shoulders are higher than they should be. I am now majestic. Mm. But Ezekiel talked about the way the men of old, our fathers of old, walked like angels. They glided in the pa they, in the palace of God. In the palace of God, only be motion timber lost the capital near Washington DC. Only be motion mm -hmm. marrying, even. but I am in my parish. Moshe Lao Lao, Moshe Wumi. She be that is the way I'm representing my God. Mura Silizi. Do you understand? Only Boshe Yekashe, Taba Fio Wasi. That it is beyond Moria Bamokule. It is beyond all of that. Bao ni moshe dio kon mi si ki ni oro oluwa tin se tin tin se imole ni ipase ona mi ton ton mi sono. That question is for everybody. Agba, omode, odo. It is not pay a am blame agba. Gbogbo wa pata. Even Sunday school teachers. What are we teaching knowing that whatever we say to the kids on my bawo dagba and shape and shape destiny and shape destiny and omode in kota and shetani pe don't look at me or ti mo so ni ke so we are shaping people's lives those people that you said they should not look at your character today but listen to your word they are coming back in a decade they are coming to perpetuate much more illicit behaviors on the altar and this is a seed that you sowed 10 years ago and you like just look out of the phone there was no counseling and you like she just look out of there's no checkup they did not know it but they didn't they cannot recite the creed dollar Nobody's falling up with them on how they are reading their Bibles. Nobody's falling up with them, but they are now holy. The real message will out there. We will not get messages that are not in alignment with the biblical teaching. Maria Ba. How? How? I, uh, as the questionnaire for today, I, I am tempted. And if we look at our timing, I think we were getting close to the two hour mark. And this conversation is, well, we're not halfway. Well, I'll just ask this question. I, I hope it can go around. It might be a mini question, John. Let me be the one asking the question for today. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 27, uh, sorry, 23, 29. Let me, let me rely on, yeah, it says, it's not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like hammer that breaks 
the rock in pieces. And Sister Lizzie kind of moved us to Iru or Rawulogbo Iru, Iru marketing. What kind of God did we market to these people? Uh, what kind of words, uh, what flyer did we give to them? The content in it that says, uh, just come. Our God is big enough. Just come. So if the word of God is like Ammon, that is supposed to crush people, and it's fire that is supposed to ignite and burn, what kind of words do we hear from our pulpit that will bring people into conversion? Paul said, ever learning, but not coming to the place of truth. What kind of words comes out of our sermon? And uh, what do we do to address that issue? Uh, who takes that? Brian Zika. Yes, sir. Thank you so or much for the question. What kind of words should come out? Should come out. Yeah. Thank you so much for the question. You know, um, in Celestial Church of Christ, I believe that this church, we have the most number of evangelists in this okay. church. You know, because we have different ranks of evangelists. We have supreme evangelist. We have uh, prophet evangelist, senior evangelist, venerable senior, venerable most senior, special venerable most. So there's thousands of evangelists in Celestial Church of Christ. But unfortunately, how many of us as evangelists that have the evangelist rank, how many are actually called to preach? How many are actually called to preach? How many have the gift to teach? Or how many have the grace to teach? Because we're all graced in different aspects. Some, you might be graced just to pray for people. Once you pray, they receive healing. Once you pray for them, they receive deliverance. But because praying isn't so much of a loud gift in Celestial Jesus of Christ, I must get to that pulpit. And people, everybody must see my, my cassock that I'm the one preaching. So unfortunately, what Sister Lizzie was saying is spot on, right? Look at this. Now, in Celestial Church of Christ, right, or in our church these days, right, nobody will call a youth and ask you, how is your walk with Christ going? How are you, what type of temptations are you facing? How are you overcoming? How can I support you in prayer? No. But you, you know how much your youth are making in, in, in their career. So you now force them to give money. You now force them to give offering. You now force them and check their tithe that you're supposed to be giving this amount. Woe unto you. The words that we preach on the pulpit, right, Brescia? I'm going to your question. The words that we're supposed to be preaching on the pulpit, it's supposed to be words that people will hear and they would, they would hate the sermoner. Because it shouldn't be a sweet, sweet, it shouldn't be anything sweet to your hearing. It should, it should, it should, it should attack that demon inside of you. That evil spirit in you. You should get back home and be, be disgusted with your ways. But instead now the sermons that we hear, they're sweet. They're, they're, you know, we like, we like the sermons. And even if we don't like the sermons, We'll listen to the sermon, and <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, the person that preaches the sermon, they won't even be a person that follows the words of the sermon. So it'll just be like death. Go. It, it would just be like talking, right? But not everybody is called to actually give sermons on the pulpits. Not everybody is called to prophesy. Not everybody is called to pray. People have different, 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 um, different, different gifts. And unfortunately, I know the constitution says, okay, every three, three years, it was to get anointment. Me, myself, I don't really believe in that. I don't believe in that. You're supposed to get, you're supposed to get anointment three, three years. I believe that in Celestial Church of Christ, they gave us a listening ear, right? Jehovah Jehovah hear me. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Yes, it is written. Get anointment three, three years. But did you hear the voice of God before you received that anointment? Or you, did you just get it? Because this person entered to the church of Christ after me and he's already wearing venerable superior, but I'm only wearing senior evangelist. Mm. Right? 
it is so right I don't here. believe in that. <laughs> sorry, what was that, Bresham? No, go ahead. Please. Go I, I don't believe in the three three years. I'm sorry to say. Right. Thank you, Bravenga. My final question tonight, and I will keep my mouth shut. I promise. Before you ask me the question, I want to make a, a, a clear notion from what Brian's girl said about anointment. Celeste said you can take anointment every three three years, but he didn't say it is a compulsion. It is at the shepherd, according to the way we knew it, right? All you should go to a good or the pay share. Ode tossier. The question no, now bro. is that at the shepherds no. doing that due diligence. No, bro, Brenga, before we even get to there, I know some individuals that even if the shepherd doesn't give them anointment, they will go and take the anointment. And they will go to another parish to go. That is where, yes. no, that's why because, oh God. One second. This is because we and, have asked that leadership because the, the way we know it's all you should have got a little bit of sign there. So if you go on your state evangelist or your regional supervisor, if your unit know, are not corrupt, they should well, come yeah, you know, you know, people uh, uh, everybody knows the Nigerian no, case. I'm saying we are saying the same thing. We, don't get it. Like it. we are saying the same thing. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. according to the way the structure was made, you must go under your shepherd. You should have a sign, hey, right? She, but she now you to... see we are an HOD, an end of Dowsis, who oh. gives someone an anointment in a parish without the shepherd. Moments. Literacy moments. Bragwing Bragwing in every organization, I'm sorry, Ezekiel. There are unwritten rules. Maybe, maybe, and you know, unwritten rules overrides the written rules. Do you what get? Is the, what is the written rule about anointment in Selle? Uh, unwritten rule, then you will not load from one room that we can leave and go to Nigeria, or we leave to another parish to get, and we still come and we expect our shepherd to do investiture on us. Unwritten rules, and that's why because we fail to train and teach people. On the Papa so pe, emi mo funi ni asho. Talon funi ni emi. So all these things is just ordinary asho here to me, right? Mm. But Isaac, you are hitting a point on about the way people behave in Selah about the pulpit. But one thing I say is, I believe everybody can preach in Selah. Mm. That's that's my own stand. Even mm. if you are given the as a prophet. If you prepare yourself and you're too in tune with the Holy Spirit, and remember, I disagree. I, I disagree with you, sir. I'm when I said if you're in tune, you know, if you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, one face only a girl was soon, right? One face only a star. But all the fear I see, I mean, oh, 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 study or all long, you do the due diligence. Not because you are coming to the pulpit to come and fire someone who has offended you, or to come and tell us that you know Papa or Shofa, or you know some history about Sele, which is what is more popular in churches today. How many summoners who are giving the opportunity to go to the pulpit go into the world to study what they were supposed to study? How many of them look para more before going to a guy a guy was swinging? That's the law, but they will say it's only for a lesson, <laughs> right? But they're going up a pit. So to me, I mean, I bet you define this. The, the, the way I've, and I've seen it work in Sele, there are people, our fathers of those days, who doesn't know how to write, read and write? Who doesn't know how to read the Bible, right? How did they get on the pulpit and they delivered and they deliver the word of God that pierced the mind? Some of them. Don't know how to. Some of them are are, are conk prophets, right? But Thomas Gura Gawasu. To the people of Fila, we see no emi alone. So my own take is, if the people we have today in Sele are going to that pulpit, can diligently follow the ordinance of God through the church, sanctify yourself and study. Can she put in Gawasu on that Sunday? Or go to my goodbye book. Or on Sunday, my goodbye book. What do you want to preach out? These are the, to me, that's that these are the issues that we have in Sierra Bash. You might not believe that God can give anybody when you go on that puppy. Yes, you can be a fervent prophet. Come on, hear me. Come on, hear me. Or along, right? But any can you to battle or yori? Abby. So if you pray for that, be more alone, then me sorrow. 
openimi komi it's a walk it's what you ask for but are we prepared how many that are prepared shame to love go what on language that is coming to church that way all of those was you need saturday moju or the one was social on sunday abi and there comes that osigbe kokolate let's let's it's not, the problem is not about the gifts i believe once you step on that pulpit on that because i've i've experienced it before i have been on that pulpit before right and what i wanted to preach was different from what came from my mouth it was changed totally i prepared for it but god added something different so to me if our prophets our fathers in the altar who have the opportunity to prepare themselves now i just took it out for my wife 5 a.m in the morning and 10 a.m and 12 p.m in the afternoon you want to go on the pulpit and what do you want to preach that's just my own take on that one uh, uh Bravinga, that was that was nice and uh, this is where i actually differ uh first is it is not the office the one that preaches occupy whether the office of the prophet or the evangelist or do you get what I'm saying? It's not the office we are attacking. So it's not we saying, or uh, Brother Ezekiel was the one that brought us to this point, saying that, oh, the evangelists, we definitely know that evangelists, or those we call evangelists, are not the only one God has graced with the ability to preach. This is what comes from the pulpit someone can even go home make his researches and come on the pulpit and preach fantastically but this is what paul said in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. i'll just speak verse 1 and 4. he says and so it was with me brothers and sisters when i came to you i did not come with eloquence of human wisdom as i proclaimed to you the testimony about god so this is what happens when you go or when we go to 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 study we will study we would it would be so beautiful and perfect but it would be void of certain things because what we will come to present to people would be wisdom of men will be eloquence of speech yes people will say that sermon is what is beautiful but it will not carry the power and the grace to change people. The sermon can be, so it's not about we not having beautiful sermons. The sermon can be beautiful, the deliverer or the preacher can be eloquent, but does it carry the power? Verse four, he said, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the spirit's power. That is what is missing. That what we get from the pulpit, it is motivational, it is persuasive in, in, in nature. Oh, it is what makes, I call it the feel good gospel. The, the, the gospel that would not come with armoring, with piercing and with fire. It would not armor and crush people to crush them from their sin and move them from a place of death into life. He will not pierce them like the sword, that they will bleed of the nonsense and purge them of the rubbish they carry. And he will not set their soul on fire so they can receive the light of God. So most of our sermons are void of what? Of the power the spirit of power that can change and convert so they will ever be learning and not come to the knowledge of the truth of god that is what is missing so our pulpit needs to be washed sanctified and only those that are called that have the calling to do so should it is not only from the pulpit we can Come on, give me the grace. Go back, or should you say, Celeste, go back to the normal ordinance? Like, oh, you should have good tongue, oh, gun, la fullory of fe, that's it, berry, go bessie, oh, she was soup, 
but so that he said on a polo show button we started bringing right elders in the church to eat so are we saying that we should go to this uh the clergies because some of these clergies also they are accidental along with one but when the miss call along we call the flash along with your call why they call the phone in your call why they will bound along quick i'm sorry to say it might sound um degrading but this is one of the issues we have in each other so are we saying that we should go back to those the way it was before that i want to show you in the camp shepherd in the camp they come at best you come out show us what if there is someone who has a, because it's messing on my brain now oh you should go to full and go that way they get b or she show you are not supposed to walk that that's this come out for a long boy no job what is coming back from their mouth can you address that? You don't know what you have to do for that one. Because actually, if you don't need questions this morning, so the questions are going back to you. What you are saying, I'm bringing back to you. Our shepherds, our men of God, right? Are they supposed to go back to the days of the old? Or how do you fix that issue? Because as God, the men of God themselves, how do you fix that issue? Mm. Don't who? Answer. The, the caller always justify the cult. The one who called would give every needed ingredients onto the one he has called. And because we are a body, Bobowa Lolorunpe, Shubon Vitope Wasi, Tofi Wasi, or Toto. He said, To some, I called them. To be prophets, prophets, some to be pastors, some to be apostles, some to be teachers. Hallelujah. Tabawa ni bi kwewa. Kuna ni ni bubu problem ni. That's the first thing. Even as a shepherd, the office of the shepherd is different from the office of the evangelist. Though some might be graced in that area, but in, in places where they are weak, it will strengthen them with others. So I would, the seller that gave us provision that some other, and first is, hope we know the shepherd is not the only Levite in church. We need to first understand that. Yeah. I want to call new Shelua. The book of uh, Deuteronomy gave us some other people that are also Levites. The choristers are Levites. The gatekeepers are Levites. And the priests are Levites. So amongst, and I remember one day you and I already had a conversation, and it was, oh, most of the, most of shepherds always come from the choir. You remember that conversation, Brabuena? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so most... if I would, yes. So she she back on in the choir. So but do do you know? She go she was. So the one that has come, eh? I call it. Ni but what do you know? She go one she was. Oh, for a solo, but to dia koni a solo me. Ni but to dia koni. She a koni to do you feel rega? I be chasey bueno, right? So when you don't koni si, ni but ye ti ti to dia omo to do ma koni koko ase long ko. The color justifies the cult. The so, yeah, we understand that part. Into ah, see, I I don't want I for me I want to avoid going into the business of who God called and who God did not call. Oluwa lo mu yon to kwe. Eni to lo unde kwe fun are. O mo be yon lo kwe o abiko kwe. Yes, God that calls, know those he called. And the ones he called are the ones he did not call that called that called themselves. No who called them. One of my teachers will say, God called many, but how many of them are still working in the call or still working for the one that called them? But how many of those God called are working for those, for the person that called them? Hmm. That's where I will, I will end that my own question.
Ese ma mu ge ma bere ko yo won Olorun mo le ni. Tisali zi over to you. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Thank you. Thank you so much for going. <laughs> but I shall. I mean, and I think this is truly the crossroads because yes, we have to go back to the basis. Yes, we have to. I mean, every 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 journey that we would walk as believers starts from when with our hearts we believe unto righteousness and with the mouth we make confessions unto salvation. Right? That beginning point determines the fruits that we will bear in the different capacities that we function in the Lord's tabernacle. That foundation determines the fruits that we will bear when we begin to abide in the tabernacle and how far we go in staying in our call. Or even if we know that we are called at all or the purpose at which we were called for. You know? So I... I know that a lot has been said tonight. I know that time is ticking. But again, I have a strong, strong push to say that Crossroads is not a discourse platform to just talk about the problems, right? Which is why we are combining analysis, right? Saying yes. these are the problems these look like the root, root cause we are inviting the audience to put in the charts and call in to say this is the these are the things you think are causing these issues but also these are the recommendations i was taking notes for recommendations and action plans right what where now that we are this ikorita ashiori in the name of jesus what can we do what i have here our servants have to be by the holy spirit period we can, we should not settle for less number two there has to be integrity in the new members and new convert process there has to be integrity there has to be integrity when we are bringing new converts and new members because a new convert today is going to be a shepherd of a very big parish maybe in 20 years time the way the great converted yes. will determine how they will perpetuate conversion too and that they will call other people forth into the fold. Noah got very direct instructions. He got the instructions on dimensions and everything. If he had made one misstep, ever knows what would have happened. Also, our anointment, given that we are in a fold that is very unique, beautiful, and dynamic, and we love colors, and we love designs, as the Holy Spirit has given to us, we have to add integrity to that anointment process so that people who are anointed can also be doubly anointed by the spirit they cannot be anointed so we would not have anointed members without anointing functioning in important offices that can shape people's lives and destinies integrity in our anointment process I would also say that we need to have a renewed mindset. Our minds need to be renewed, that we are not competing. This is the race is not for the sweet. This is a heavenly race. We are not, we are not competing. Irrespective of what parish we are in, we don't we don't bring forth programs because we want to compete with parish B. We have to bring forth programs because the Holy Spirit has instructed us to bring forth those programs because it would work for the engagement of our own members so that they can come more towards Christ. We need to come back to the moment where we pray and wait on the Lord for directionality when we have programs. So that when we have programs, there would be desired impact. We are not pleasing principalities and powers or rulers of the darkness of this world or, or spiritual wickedness being perpetuated in high places. We are pleasing the Lord God of hosts. Oni oluwatole, oluwatolagbara. And only they lift up your heads, or you get that is the person that we are pleasing, that we seek to please, and he's the one that we report to. So, when we are having, we need to know there is no competition. Only Kalu Kulo Majiro is sure word. Only Wakat, not Site, she shining me for me, mom, papa. Right? Only every single person, Ati Ewe, Atomode, Ati Agba. Like Jomajuri Shawa, 
Atewe ya ti yagba. Awo si rojo wa. Right? Aha. Atewe ya ti yagba. Lama rojo wa. So, that, there is no competition. The only competition I should have is with myself. And I'm supposed to put my work day to day. Side by side. Juxtapose. You're using juxtapose. Juxtapose it with the dictate tenets. And the precepts of the Lord God of hosts. Okay? And not in Shobago. In Jenimo, Israel. Because I cannot say anything by Israel in Moki in Tobeki in Su and read those Psalms in confidence when you are one your mom, renewal of the mind. God cannot be mocked. God cannot be mocked. We need to understand the tenets. Tenets of first of all, we have to understand the tenets of Christ because we know that is the top, most top. Christ came for a reason. If we don't understand the tenets of Christ, if we don't understand love the Lord with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your strength, love your neighbor. See, if we don't understand that love principle, cherry, one or bad loss, sorry, pull pit, CCD, 30, 40, 50 years time, and say, oh, fear, see, and no, me more, go ye father. The laws and principles and tenets of the other remain, does not change, it remains the same. People are just going to be hearing it. It becomes habitual. There's going to be habitual laxity. There would be habitual laxity where people would just be like a bicycle in what they hear because they can predict what is coming next from the announcer, the church secretary. But really, it is not passing through them. So the tenants, if we respect the tenants of Christ, my God, it would be easier to respect the dictates of the Holy Spirit to the church. We need to return to the quality of the word. We need to go back to the point where we will pray. Pray through me that I will decrease so you shall increase. I've been told to give the word. What do you have to say? What is it? What are you saying in the moment to your people? Do you understand? And that comes with submission. I also have here, we have to invest in teaching the truth. You know, we are calling ourselves in and calling ourselves out. That's why it's crossroads, where ideas meet. We have to invest in teaching the truth. Because it's when we teach the truth, we will understand the fundamental principle that the hour has now come. That those who will worship the Father must worship him in truth and in spirit. If we are not teaching the truth, I'm sorry. Whatever we think we are doing. We can have all these confessions and they will be vain in the presence of the Lord God of hosts. We have to invest in teaching the truth. We also have to understand our diverse offices. We, it is very scarce to have teachings. On the diverse offices very very scarce people operate in different capacities and there is mutual respect and it is one body in christ the holy spirit gives freely and liberally we have to open our hearts there are diverse offices let's understand strengths let's know that the lord makes his strengths perfect in our weaknesses let's understand that everything we do has to be unto god and for his glory it's part of the process of renewing our minds. These are recommendations and action plans. As individuals, we have to know, make ourselves useful. Baba shemi la la tushe. Mama jem bajore je o baba. Shemi la la tushe. Whenever we find ourselves in the Lord's tabernacle and in the midst of the garden of the brethren, and we are even outside representing. Let's keep it in mind that we want to be builders. We want to be repairers. We're not going to be destruct, destructing people. If we are giving criticism, we make it constructive criticism and not destructive criticism. It is part of love. We have to understand that. As individuals, let's make ourselves useful. It is Ogba Jaoni Ogba Kongbe Lokeyon Ogba Idenini Mobi Awon Malek Bogba Awon Malek Aton Yo Ayon Lan Lan Yo Kiyon They know their roles. Oh, they are not just working about aimlessly. Every angel has his assignment. Every spirit has a name, and it's because of they are connected to the source. 
So as an individual, we have to be connected to the source, but we have to know what we're doing. New York bad jara. Only a young lang la body ikbe nothing do ikbe alleluia ewo kamakuro tora waje. And it's your bamo purpose. Ni New York bad jara. This vineyard near me on earth. Kole mo purpose. Ni York bad to wa ni onu. Kama tu wa sokwe a wa go ikbe odo a guton no. It's a process. It is not about the wings that we wear. Oh, the wings can fly like a butterfly. Everything, heaven and earth, would pass away, but the word of the Lord would stand on the day of judgment. Amen. I have two more. Emma Binuka Jomikbo, Moko not Nibi of Ashen Sorrow. Kalek, we are key, a simple bow was your own so Nipperel. Our pulpit needs to be washed and sanctified. The audience confirmed it in comments, in our different expressions and statements that we have made out of passion and in the, in the little knowledge through the Holy Spirit. We know that this, our pulpit needs to be washed and sanctified with the blood of Jesus. By extension, the altar. There is too much blood on the altar. Yet we keep saying, Deliver me from blood guiltiness. Hey, 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 there is too much blood on the altar. It's not blood that's actually dig. The blood is dripping on the altar. Or renum cause blood that is drip on the altar. It journalists say it is causing blood to drip on the altar. It is causing blood to drip on the altar. Any to one need your peace position that is choosing not to know and do and acknowledge their roles and their different offices on the vineyard. They are causing blood to be on the altar. Oko lock ball and one sheep long shake below. I'm a berry. The Bible was clear in Jeremiah what is going to happen to the pastors who have been put in, 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 the, in the position to watch the flock and by virtue of their doings, the flock are nowhere to be found. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final one. <laughs> Let us submit to the Holy Spirit. The minimum. That is the the person of Christ that is omniscient, omnipresent. That is the person of Christ that rose around the extension of God the Father that is always with us. That is our companion. In everything. Not that we would just say, ah, a lot of Uluwa Sokwe are manipulated Uluwa Sokwe because of there are hidden agendas. So let us stop giving ourselves milk by saying, oh, well, these days, test all spirits. And the way to test all spirits is by the Holy Spirit of the Lord that is deposited inside of you as an individual. Because once you receive Christ, there is an activation inside of you. This is knowledge that does not go around in our pulpits. Because a lot of times our pulpits like dependency. The Lord has called us to be dependent on the Holy Spirit, not on human beings. And that is why our Bibles will keep telling us trust in man is vain. Holy Spirit is the all in all that can lead us. I will end by saying, Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bro, Benga, do you have your recommendations and uh, solutions? Well, I do have mine. I don't know if you want to take a little time. Why I express mine or you go first? And um, Ezekiel, then what is that the, little, the, the basic thing is for us to build a formidable structure. That's the first thing to me, to build a structure and to uh consciously sensitize ourselves on the need to uh put ourselves into accountability as a church because uh this is an era the old administration or the old eras and of, to me was an era where there was less accountability from the people who are supposed to be the servant leaders right and uh 
the, the worshippers as also sometimes we are filled in our duty to also checkmate and ask the right question. So just my own is for us to build a formidable structure where we train the trainers, where the church from the hierarchy put a structure where we train uh, the clergies, the church workers, uh, the shepherd, and a streamlined way that even for the basic training, teaching for all members, even when you're going for anointment, the things you should know about the rudiments of the church, about the rudiments and the things of the church, that can be foundational. So when you have a leader, a shepherd, or a senior man in the church who is doing things right, the basic knowledge you know about the teaching of the church should be able to come in and you say, oh, to checkmate them. Because sometimes uh, we have a lot of wrong indoctrinations about the church, about the teaching. So mine is, let's create a structure where we train the trainer. When I say the trainer, the people at the, at the air, the shepherd, the circuit air, the district air, the regionals, they are the train, the shepherds, or, and the shepherds also pass the knowledge down, some basic to the church members, right? And if you are going for anointment, let's have a, a creative database where you can go to, so that in your own, and uh, the last about when we go to the people to preach, I think there should be a timer in most churches about, I mean, it might sound ridiculous, but just to curtail some unnecessary spitted word on the pulpit, just my own advice, there should be some timing. Let's say on Sunday, I mean, my parish in Nigeria used to have it. On Sunday, you can't spend for five minutes on the pulpit. On weekdays, is 15 minutes. Maybe this will reduce some unnecessary spoken words on the pulpit or if we can make it a situation where every seminar going on your pulpit in your parish must document another pdf now we have a, in a social media we have a media team right then it just has a website you have an editorial team so what you are preaching someone today bring it to the media team and they probably on the website so that you see that well if you if, if you are teaching nonsense and you're coming to the public to come and preach uh, about your fight with somebody or about the history of the church, you'll be able to you'll be able to, to, to see your score that you messed up. But if is a but if even if it's little and it's in line with the word of God, maybe when you're made to walk to go and document what you want to preach, welcome to the public and give it to the church editorial team to go through and vet your sermon. Or what you want to preach, maybe to bring some sanity into what we come to be with as just documentation. Then advise that come out the one it's a to have a good year ago was so often to more want to be seen. But I'm more for your meta sunrise for three days, but a lesson, but someone maybe. It should still bring some sanity to the church and help us all in the church. I submit to that. Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, I have a couple, but uh, Sister Lizzie checked some of them. And uh, I would give my recommendations or solutions using Paul's blueprints, Apostle Paul's blueprints. Uh, the Corinthian church was a... a a funny church and they had certain problems that we can relate with as a fault. Uh, the Corinthian church has so much decadence in it and issue of sexual immorality that it was a major problem that Paul needed to address and it was difficult. So one of the things in Paul's recommendation was he said, God spoke to him, the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul, uh, Acts chapter 18, nine to ten and he says the lord spoke to paul saying do not be afraid but speak and hold not thy peace so the first thing is we must speak out we must become a people that will speak out and condemn just as god condemns the sin and loves the sinner 
we must not become or continue to become a people that would embrace every form of uh, immorality and decadence in the church. And when we see them respectfully as a people, let us begin to speak out. That's what God said to Paul, the Spirit said. He said, speak out. Don't be afraid. We are not saying we want to go to our fathers and begin to, you know, to behave rashly or in a brash manner, no. But we need to develop avenues where we can speak up and point these things out. So that's the first thing I would say. Just start speaking. The second would be, uh, we must learn to address things from their roots. And that's why we, we said in our an, in an, in, uh, analysis, we have the root. And the roots becomes the pillar of a thing. So where is the pillar of the church? It is in our leadership. So we must learn to reach out to leadership or leadership must organize in such a way that they begin to address these issues and take action steps towards them. Uh, we, have, we have been on several programs and we have on different uh, fora where we engage church leaders or our leadership. And they tend to know what the problems are, but the solution or the action plans they would take to address those solutions becomes the problem. So we must move away from that era of we understanding what the issues or the challenges are and begin to profile real life solutions to them. So that would be the second thing. The third one is there must be unity in the fold. We cannot continue that some are, are, some are for Paul and the other for Apollo and we expect change to happen. Because uh, one of the problems, again, we have is indiscipline in the church. And this unity is that fertilizer that breeds indiscipline. A scenario. Someone has done something that was, correct, that was to be corrected. And when correction will come, certain individuals will leave the church because of correction and, chast and chastisement and move to other places. And those people will accept them because, after all, mortgages need to be paid. After all, it is all about the numbers. It is we are more than this parish, so we are the one that is the latest or the reigning one in town. And all of these things is the seed of this unity that is breeding them. Because when we are united, you will not invade a particular place because of certain actions that is supposed to be melted on you. And you go to another place and the same thing will not be there. So we need to be united as a people. Then finally, our messages must change. This diluted and watered down messages we preach. The message that says you don't really need to uh, denounce your evil works, repent, and come to God. Don't worry. Give to God. Your giving will blind the sight of God. So through your giving, you will be lifted. Through your giving, salvation will come. Our messages must change. Because if you will look at a church, it be a church, or rather a people you see, the church you see, the people you see, they are a reflection of what their altar is, what their pulpit is. So if you see a church that is morally upright, then you know there is something right about the pulpit. If you see a church that's okude kato, then you can tell there is something that is questionable that comes from that pulpit. There are more, but let me rest at this point. But Ezekiel, I pass the button. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I think, you know, you all have touched base on practically everything, um, especially as it pertains to structure and uh, celestial of Christ at large. 
So I just have three simple suggestions, advice for youth. That's it, for youth. Um, number one, don't just go through the service like a ritual. Don't just go through the service like subconscious, unconsciously. Be present with every single thing that you do in the church while you're inside the church, right? Be present with every single thing. Every line that you speak, everything that you do, make sure you understand the significance of that thing. So when the, when the service conductor says, Eyiba, 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 have mercy upon me, O oh God. Don't just say, have mercy upon me, O oh God. Be present, understand the lines and connect yourself with the word that's being spoken through your mouth as it pertains to everything that you recite, everything that you do in the church of God. Um, number two, the Bible says that faith without works is dead, right? The Bible was speaking in the book of James, is that faith without works is dead. You believe in God, good job. Even the demons believe in God too. So, but if you believe in God, make sure that your, your, your faith is backed with works, not necessarily relying on the faith, or not necessarily, necessarily relying on works of sacrifice and works of, you know, to, to make yourself feel holy, but works that back up, right? The significance of faith in your life, right? So you believe in celestial church of Christ. Do you follow the tenets of celestial church of Christ? If you don't follow the, the tenets of celestial church of Christ, you probably don't necessarily believe in celestial church of Christ. So faith without works is dead. Check your works, check your ways, correct yourself. Number three, sharpen your ability of discernment. Discernment above all. I believe that discernment is the number one gift of the Holy Spirit. Without discernment, a woli is not going to be able to give messages. Without, because he won't know what voice is speaking. He won't know what spirit is speaking to him. He won't know anything. Without discernment, your worship in celestial of Christ would probably be next to none. Because first, you probably won't even be able to do anything in celestial of Christ without discernment. Because so many things require a listening ear from God. What do I do at this instance? What thanks offering would you like me to give to you, God? What what uh, sacrifice would you like me to make for you, God? When should I do this? When should I do that? It takes the listening ear. It takes the spirit of discernment. Don't just receive everything. Like, like my big sister, my big brothers have been saying. Unfortunately, the pulpit in our church is, uh, is uh, you know, kind of, kind of something, right? So be careful as to what you take into your spirit, man. Be careful what you listen to. Make sure you test every word and every spirit, right? With the, with the ability of discernment and, you know, with the word of God. And it'll be well with us. Thank you. Sister Lizzie, I think you should wrap. Hello, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> And we give glory to God Almighty for taking over today's episode on the creed. Um, it is our prayer that Jesus Christ himself sits inside of our hearts and dwells full time, not PRM, dwells full time inside our hearts. And that we also dwell in the Lord's presence and that is shadow full time and not PRM or part time. Um, in the name of Jesus. A lot has been said. The prayer is that it so seeds into our hearts and that it germinates and it meets us well. Um, it's the word of God. It might come as very harsh, um, but it's the word of God. We cannot, we don't have the grace to tone it down. It's the word of God that we shall not stand against us in judgment in the name of Jesus. Um, having said that, um, enough said tonight, yeah? <laughs> in the in the hearts and spirit of passion week um, let us continue to do works of righteousness and cling on to the crucifix of the lord god almighty that is able to save us from all things all right uh, i believe it's a good time for closing prayer um thank you so much everyone for joining us today we'll look forward to seeing you last monday in april um again i'm lizzie davids I have Brother Ezekiel, Brother Sheryl, and Brother Benga, and we appreciate you um, being patient and persevering, exuding the gifts of the Spirit as, you know, and the fruits of the Spirit as we at this conversation. Um, if that's okay, uh, Brother Benga, would you be able to close us up in prayers?
Holy Michael, mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for the grace given to us tonight. We say glory and honor to your name. For your fear, Allah, I tell you in more to fall out in the sorrow. For you, we are the God of power. And we just as long as a memo, it has so to do one I bet you drew the wall of your king and memo, Darigi. I tell what I saw. I barra your affair. That is Let your spirit renew the church. Church is coming word, and the word is already in the church. In Jomimo, oh, shake to bow your very kind of a father, and we must soon join us. For all our elders, the power, the knowledge for them to do right, and the grace for them to continue doing great in your vineyard. Heavenly Father, give it to them. Only you at large, give us the grace to stand the test of time. Amen. Give us your Holy Spirit to stand the test of time. Amen. Give us your power. To be able to walk righteously in your way and in your words. Amen. And for every member of this church, let your grace abound. We pray for every spirit of death. Okay. Let your mercy speak for, for us. Amen. Amen. For every power of judgment that has descended into the church through our sins, we pray for mercies. Fire Lord, give it to us. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Can we share the grace together? Yeah. Collective grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the rest of the Bible, let you send the upon our prayers. Let you will be done in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for asking our prayers to pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. So, hallelujah to praise the Lord. Have a wonderful night, everyone. <laughs>